Let's visit to Techopedia webpage to learn what is semi-supervised learning. The little bit of labeled data provided to the systems serve as the starting point for the computer systems. After that, the systems need to accept and learn from large volumes of unlabeled data. However, the labeled data provided may be helpful in classifying the broad type of unlabeled data the system may be receiving. Why semi-supervised learning is important? Thanks to HackerNoon website for the detailed answer to this question. Working in machine learning project, especially a supervised learning problem, requires a lot of labeled data to make sure that your model can learn and perform well. But the most common option is to manually label all unlabeled data and combine it with the existing one. But this option is very expensive as you will need to hire people to label the data. Also, it will take a lot of time to accomplish the labeling task and then continue with your data science project. But with semi-supervised learning, you will be able to skip the labeling task and the machine learning algorithm to learn from both labeled data and unlabeled data. By doing so, a semi-supervised learning algorithm can utilize the unlabeled data and help you achieve better performance than a supervised learning algorithm, which requires you to have only labeled data. Digital Vidya explains a few characteristics and algorithms that make certain data suitable for semi-supervised learning. Size of unlabeled portion. Typically, semi-supervised learning is used only when a small percentage of data values are labeled. If the labeled data is larger, then it's instead more preferable to go for supervised learning. Input-output proximity. In semi-supervised learning, for an unlabeled input, the system tries to give an output based on a label at a data point in its proximity. Semi-supervised learning works on the idea that two data points belonging to the same cluster will mostly be in close proximity to each other. If the label at a data portion consists of data points under the same classification, but is separated by a low density area, it might affect the learning accuracy. Simplicity, complexity of labeling. An interesting aspect of semi-supervised learning is that if the inference of labeled data is complex, it becomes a larger problem than the original problem. In addition, having many attributes of labeling in the labeled set also increasing complexity and affects accuracy. Inductive and transductive learning. When having a mix of labeled and unlabeled values, there can be two kinds of approaches in learning. The first is simple to understand the method of induction. Inductive inference studies the labeled data and creates reasoning that builds a general rule for classification. It then tries to include the test cases under the general classification. Transduction does not prefer generalization very much. The transductive inference draws reasoning from special training cases as against creating general rules and applies this reasoning to specific test cases. Certain assumptions are necessary for the structure of data provided while using semi-supervised learning. Continuity assumption. It's always more likely for points closer to each other to share the same level. Although there might occur some exceptions to this assumption, it simplifies the decision boundaries. Cluster assumption. The data points are assumed 
to form discrete cluster with each cluster having all examples of the same label. Manifold assumption. In cases where the data might lie in higher dimensions and it becomes extremely difficult to map the data in those dimensions, manifold assumptions can be used. It assumes that the data lies on much lower dimensions and by learning those lower dimensions, embedding that data becomes much easier. Pseudo-leveling. Pseudo-leveling is a simple method that consists of the following steps. We first use a reliable training set that gives us a good result to train the system. We then feed the system with the unleveled test set to produce output. These outputs might or might not be accurate and are also called pseudo levels we combine the level of training data from step one and test the data from step two. The model is trained against using the above mentioned concatenated data. Semi-supervised learning algorithms are self-training, generative low density separation. Self-training is the simplest semi Supervised learning method, which relies on the assumption that one's own high confidence predictions are correct. It's a rubber method and applies to exist complex classifiers. However, early mistakes might be reinforced into the learning. Generative models process the data to make deductions about the data into its digital essence. As opposed to discriminative modeling, generative produces something here. Prediction and creation of new data points based on existing data. Low density separation works on the simple logic of placing boundaries where there are fewer data points. Some other Semi-supervised learning algorithms include heuristic method, graph-based separation, and SVM. Semi-supervised learning in terms of everyday applications. Web-page classification, detection of fraudulent activities, facial recognition, speech recognition, genetic sequencing, 